That shed's gonna go, that end shed. Where? But there is. Oh, it's a shame to see it go. I'll cut the, I'll cut the um, fire alarm. Can you hear it? had a firm grip by the time it was spotted. The flames breaking out of the roof turned the night sky red. 80 were evacuated from their homes, roads and the nearby railway line were blocked off. By daylight it's clear that this factory has now been put out of action. Although the immediate danger to nearby homes is over, the memory of a dramatic night will last for a long time. The flames were just above the trees, above everything. It was just horrendous. It just sounded like, well, like a bomb. And it we've had a, a very major fire here. It's much too early to give any definite views on, on what, uh, what actually caused it. Our fire investigation teams are already sifting through the evidence with the police looking, looking for anything that may point to the start. Obviously we could see the scale of the devastation there. What did that mean for the operation you had to carry out? It's been particularly difficult because of the dangers inherent with this particular type of fire. Uh, there has been um, lots of uh, dangerous chemicals, paint, thinners, solvents, all involved, uh, exploding, causing dangerous fumes. Consequently, there's been a great danger to the, to the local community here as well. Obviously, you had to evacuate many people who live in the area. What, is, is there any continuing danger to those people? Now, I've been recently advised by the scientific advisors on scene here that the smoke that is, the, that is now here is, is like normal garden bonfire smoke and that we're in the process of getting the residents back into their accommodation. Mr Cartwright, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Heavy lifting gear is due from South End in the next couple of hours to demolish what is left of this fragile shell of a building that you see behind me. It's been burning now for some 15 hours. 
It's far too dangerous for fire crews to go inside at the moment, so they must take down the walls so they can declare the site safe. But what you see here behind me at the moment is a very different site to the one that confronted fire crews when they arrived here at 3 o'clock this morning. This was the terrifying sight that hundreds of residents woke up to at Beckenham early this morning. Fire tore through a paint factory, sending a series of explosions ricocheting through the building. The impact of the blaze captured on video yeah, by this man. Bang, bang, everything was just blowing up like really bad. I've never seen nothing like it, and I was speaking to one of the um, fire brigade. He said, I reckon it's the biggest fire that's ever happened in Croydon. It was the day the sun was blacked out over Beckenham as a huge pall of smoke rose from the ruins of Bollum's paint factory. At its height, flames shot hundreds of feet into the night sky as tons of paint and solvent exploded inside the plant. It caused a backdraft that brought down walls and melted the structure. Dozens of firemen braved intense heat and toxic fumes to bring the blaze under control. Five hours later, the plant was still burning. More than 100 residents living on a nearby estate had to leave their homes. Some of the children were reduced to tears. They spent the night at a primary school, among them a day-old baby girl who was given oxygen to help her breathe. i just come back from having the baby checked out because of the fumes that she was breathing in because of being so young. It was like a volcano. It was just huge. And um, then I felt the heat coming in the windows and um, I just started screaming. Local residents are concerned the estate was built too close to the paint factory and warned something like this might happen. The houses have been there three years and like, at the end of the day it's just been a, a death trap. So, like, and then we found out there's containers underground and if they caught on fire the whole estate would have been blown up. Staff who turned up for work are now uncertain about their jobs. The companies say they can give no guarantees. This afternoon some of the directors met to decide what to do next. It's possible some of the staff could be redeployed to a plant in the Midlands. They just told us, go home, come back tomorrow, we might tell you if you've got a job, really. More than 100 fire officers are still at the scene. Most of them are said to be exhausted. They'll be here for at least another day before the site can be declared safe. Of course, we've seen the effects of the fire. What do we know about the cause of it? Mary, at the moment the fire is being treated as suspicious. As you can see behind me, all the big fire chiefs are here. A major fire investigation team have been sifting through the debris all day looking for a reason for this fire. I've been talking to some of the residents on the estate. In the past, they say they've seen children throwing lighted matches into vats of paint which are stored at the back of the factory. But as yet, there is no motive. Arson, however, cannot be ruled out. Mary. Thank you, Chris. So as Chris said, damping down there continues and we will of course bring you any update on any developments in our late bulletin with Mary just after the news at 10. The blaze turned the night sky red. The factory walls buckled under the heat as a series of explosions shook the neighbourhood awake. Fire crews had to stand between the flames and rows of chemical drums. By daylight, much of Bollum's factory was reduced to rubble. It just sounded like, well, like a bomb and it just kept happening all the time. I just saw orange and blue flames everywhere. Everything was just going up, you know. Went out the front and the flames, I'm sure, was 20 foot high. So I just had to get all the kids out. This woman ran out of her home at the sound of the explosions. She was in time to see a piece of metal fly through the air and hit her car. There were young kids outside as well when that, when that flew over, so that was pretty dangerous. Glad it was my car, not anyone else but um, it was really scary. These homes were among those evacuated last night, just a hundred yards from the factory across a working railway line. Although it's officially said to be safe to return here today, many say they don't want to bring their children back as long as the fire brigade are still at work and the fumes are still drifting across their homes. We actually felt the house shake and it's too close. It's miles too close. I don't want my kids near it for the next couple of days at least. I don't feel safe. Main roads and the railway line running through Elmer's End station were closed off. The smouldering ruins are in danger of collapse and it's holding up a full investigation of the cause. The fire crews saved surrounding property, but plants like this pose special problems for them. A factory on fire is a dangerous thing, but uh, as it's proved, the, we've had a major fire here and there's been no problems for the local community. The factory has been here for 51 years, but tonight it's out of action for the foreseeable future, leaving doubts about the jobs of 150 people who are employed here.
And I'm joined now by Ed Hempill, the Managing Director of JW Bollams in Beckenham. Mr Hempill, I, I, I'd like to talk to you about the company in a moment. Obviously it's a bad day for you, but there is still some smoke uh, coming out from the uh, building behind you. Do you think there's any danger left for people who live in the area? No, I don't think there's any danger left. The fire officers have uh, secured the situation and uh, people have been uh, told they can go back to their homes. We're obviously trying to uh, get the get the job finished and uh, get access and get the people back to work as quickly as possible. Where are you and your workers left tonight? It, it looks pretty bleak in the short term, doesn't it? Yeah, the short the short term is going to be very difficult. But we've had lots of offers from other uh, competitors in the industry who have come along by telephone today to uh, see what they can do to help us. But obviously, until tomorrow, we'll not be in a position to. Uh, take them up on that. Uh, we're doing our best to get everything back tomorrow as quickly as possible. But, but do you think all of your 150 staff will still have jobs? Yes, I do. So, so everybody's going to be still in work. What, what about, very briefly, what about rebuilding the factory there behind you? Is there any chance of that? Well, that depends. We've been in discussion today with our loss adjusters and our insurers, obviously, and we've got a long way to go to to clarify where we go to on this claim situation, the rebuilding and everything else that's involved. And obviously the neighbouring uh, households have got to be looked after as well. Good, Mr Hemphill, thank you for joining us.